Good morning folks, hope we're all doing well. We are down here at the plot because the polytunnel got delivered the other day. So we're starting on the build. Well, I say we're starting on the build. I started on it the other day, but this is the first chance I've had to get down here and do some filming for it. So this is part one. And I'll do this, I'll do this in little bite-sized chunks. I'm not gonna film sort of hours and hours of footage of me and whoever's helping us build this polytunnel, putting it together. I'll just show you sort of little bits and pieces, little snippets every now and again, just to show you how we're getting on and what we're doing. Anyway, let's have a little walk down the plot here. And what I'll do actually, I'm just gonna spin the camera around in a in a minute. No, actually I'll tell you what, we'll have a we'll have a little chat here about about the polytunnel situation so far. And if I spin round like this, there we go, you can see where we've started doing bits and pieces behind us there. So the polytunnel that we've got is a one from a company called First Tunnels. Uh get a very good reputation. It's a 15 foot long and 10 foot wide, if I'm remembering that right. And we've got a few extra bits and bobs so that we've gone for the thicker steel because it gets quite windy up here. And we've gone for the extra brace bars and things like that, just to make sure it's nice and strong. And when the wind comes and the bad weather comes, uh, start off with some of the bad, I think. The polytunnel was late being delivered. Um, I was quoted sort of 15 to 20 days for delivery. It took a lot longer than that, which wasn't ideal. The company weren't very good at keeping me up to date. It was only me chasing it that then prompted some action at their end. And as for the delivery, it was supposed to be delivered on Monday. I was available to come up to the allotment to collect it. Obviously, I don't live at the allotment and I'm not here all the time. So I need to make special arrangements to be able to get away from work to come here and pick it up. It wasn't delivered on Monday. It was delivered on Tuesday. Luckily, I had taken the day off on Tuesday to come up to the plot to build the polytunnel, which hadn't been delivered. So I was here anyway when it got delivered. So I got all the stuff shuffled over. So already I was a day behind on my plans. And it was a bit, it's a bit annoying because I'd been asking favours and arranging with other people to come and help us. It was just me doing it. It would be all right. But when I'm asking other people to come and help, it's a wee bit of a pain because I'm putting them out when I've asked them to do stuff. Also, what I didn't realise is when I took delivery, there was one a lot of wood missing so some of the timbers that get used to build the doors on it the door frames and one of them was missing and i didn't know it was only the next day that i got a telephone call from them to say oh by the way uh you, you're missing a parcel and it's, it's going to turn up tomorrow and what i'd done is when i ordered it and when i'd spoken to them on the phone i'd said give us a ring you know sort of before you're going to deliver it like half an hour before so i know to be at the plot so it can be here and I didn't get anything, nothing, absolutely nothing, until yesterday when I got a message on Facebook, luckily from one of the honours guys up here, to say, oh, I found this bundle of wood at the back of the at the back of the centre there with your name and address on it. Are you needing it for anything? And I said, aye, that's the polytunnel stuff that I'm waiting for that was supposed to be delivered. So basically, the delivery company's turned up and they've dumped this pile of timber that I'm waiting for for the to build the doors with at the back of the garden centre there and they've dumped it in the area where all the old pallets and things get put out and all the old wood for the allotment uh, allotment holders to use which is a bit crap to be honest so I'm a bit cheesed off about that so currently they're only on around about a two out of five star rating from me I'm hoping the, you know they've got a great reputation for quality of product and things like that so I'm hoping when I've got it built that's really going to pay off for itself and it's going to bump that star rating up a little bit. But Mark's lot and plot at the moment only gives some two stars. So we'll see how we get on. Anyway, that's enough moaning from me. What I'm going to do, I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you the bits and pieces that I've done so far and talk you through how we're getting on. Right, so let's have a little scooch up here. So when you're ordering your polytunnels, it's, it's a bit like sort of there's a menu you can choose from, from different things as to how you want to how you want to secure it into the ground. Now, because this plot that I've got here, obviously I'm only ever renting it, I don't own it. So if anything ever happens, I want to make sure I can sort of, anything I've bought, like the pallet collars, look at the pallet collars here, I can just lift and shift them somewhere else, which is why I've gone for the option of a screw anchor. So it's basically like an Archimedes screw on the bottom of a metal pole that you screw into the ground and you can see them there. So there's four either side, and looking at the instructions and the video instructions, the, the videos that First Tunnels provide are great, by the way, to show you what to do all over YouTube. So if any of you get a polytunnel from, be sure to check them out. So the first thing you need to do is make sure these are all spaced out 
properly as they should be. So obviously I'm 15 feet long from pole to pole and then 10 feet across and you need to measure the diagonals as well. So diagonal to diagonal and that worked out at 18 feet across there. And the other thing to do is we used a string line to make sure these were all in a straight line. Now if we look up there, you can see, I can just see here by looking at it, one of them, the one second from top, is ever so slightly out. And when we were putting them in, we spotted that and we need to adjust it. So I've got one of my pals come along to help us tomorrow, so we'll get that adjusted. And believe you me, when I say screw anchors are difficult to get into the ground, they are really, really difficult to get into the ground. It took some amount of effort for two of us turning the metal bar to get these into the ground. I mean, to begin with, it's nice and easy, but as soon as you get sort of, I don't know, 20 centimetres deep, it becomes really, really, really tough to get these in. So we need to sort them out just to get them in line, because obviously I've got, a, I've got a base rail that's going to go all the way along there. So we need to make sure that's in line or else the base rail is not going to fit properly. So tomorrow morning, there's going to be a little bit of shuffling about with that just to make sure that's all right. And what we'll do, we'll just have a quick walk up here and have a look down this line. I think this side's a lot better. There you go. So you can see this side. They're all pretty much in line. I mean, the, the instructions say you can be about five centimetres out with your measurements. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be five centimetres out. We want to be as close as possible. So this side's actually looking pretty good, which bewilders me as to how we managed to get one out on the other side when we measured, measured again, measured again, and measured again. You know, and, it, and you follow the instructions. You only put it in 10 centimetres to begin with, and you measure it, and you, you check the angles, and you make your little triangles and things like that, and plan it out and see how it goes. But, uh, you know, we made a mistake. We were maybe rush, rushing a little bit towards the end there, as I mentioned before, I don't, I don't want to gripe on about it, but the problems with delivery set us back. Lost a day, so we were maybe trying to rush to get this bit done, which is the one thing you shouldn't, because these ground anchors and making sure they're square and making sure they're in properly is the most important part of the whole build, because this is the base and this is going to be it. And I've been over, I tell you what, I've been over and I've sort of shuggled them about a little bit and they are in the ground absolutely solid. So I'm pretty confident that when the wind does come or the rain comes or whatever we get else we get up here that they're going to be pretty solid and they're not going to budge anywhere right anyway two seconds and i'll switch you back around and you can see my ugly mug again so there we have it that's the first part of the build of the poly tunnel almost sort of done that's what we managed to achieve anyway the other day like i say i've got one of my friends coming to help us tomorrow and i think we're going to finish off sorting out those hoops getting them nice and square making sure that's right and the aim for tomorrow, it depends how much time we've got. I don't want to take a lend and take up loads of other people's time. But, you know, some of this, I'd have been lost trying to do that myself. If anybody thinks building a polytunnel is a one person job, nah, ask for help. Get someone to help you. It makes life so much easier. But yeah, so we've got, we've got the hoops to build tomorrow. That's the next step, according to the instructions. Once those are in nice and straight and square, get the hoops built. So we'll get the hoops on and then if I've got time after the hoops, it's the, it's the bits to stop strengthening it. So you've got the, the brace bar that goes all the way down the middle. You've got the crop bars that go along the top, along sort of side to side. You've got the base rails. And then there's bits that go in the corner that sort of strengthen the frames, that form those triangles that make it really sort of strong and solid. Then after that, I think it's the door frames. And then eventually the fun bit, when I'll need, I might need a few more people to help me out because I've, I've not done a cover before, but the covers are supposed to be really difficult and tricky to get on. So maybe it's three or four people is useful for that one. So we'll see about that. If I get most of the frame built tomorrow, that'll be brilliant. Anyway, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with the poly, polytunnel build and anything else we're doing up here, give us a subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up and we will catch you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.